Hi, this lesson will be about solving linear equations. The answer to a linear equation is called the solution. A linear equation um, will be an equation where the variable in the equation is raised to the first power. So you can't have an x squared or a square root of x or um, any variables in a denominator. So examples of what a linear equation look like are right here, 3x plus 7 equals 13, 2 times x minus 5 minus 3 equals 4x, 2y plus 8 equals 5y minus 9. All of the variables in these um, are raised to the first power. Um, examples of nonlinear equations would be these below. Uh, so the first one is what we call a quadratic equation because I have an x squared. Uh, in the in the uh, equation. Uh, in the second equation, I have a variable in a denominator, so that's not linear. Um, and in the third one, I have a radical, so that's not linear as well. Uh, so how to solve linear equations. To solve a linear equation, your goal is to get the variable on one side of the equal sign and the numbers on the other side. Um, so, sometimes you can do that in a step, sometimes it takes several steps. So, here's our first example, 3x plus 5 equals 11. So, the first thing I have to do is uh, isolate 3x, in other words, get the 5 over to the other side, and we do that by subtracting 5 from both sides. When I do that, I get 3x alone on the left, 11 minus 5 is 6, then again, you want to get x alone, so you divide by 3. You do the opposite operation of what you have. This represents 3 times x, so the opposite of multiplication is division. So we divide both sides by 3. You get that x equal to, equals 2. Um, every solution can be checked by just plugging it into the original equation. If when you plug in the solution, if the left side equals the right side, then you know that your solution is correct and this one does work all right so here's another one i have three fourths y plus one equals two thirds y minus three okay so i need this time i have variables on both sides so i'm going to get my y's onto the same side so um that means i'm going to subtract two thirds from both sides so that my y ends up on the left only. All right, so subtract 2 thirds from both sides. Um, 3 fourths y and 2 thirds y, they have different denominators. So right here, I didn't subtract them because I first have to get a common denominator. But I also showed that I, I need to move my constant over to the right, so you subtract 1 from both sides. All right, so that leaves us with negative 4 on the right, but on the left, 3 fourths and 2 thirds have a common denominator of 12. Multiply 3 fourths by 3 in the numerator and the denominator. Multiply 2 thirds by 4 in the numerator and denominator. So when you subtract 9 twelfths minus 8 twelfths, you get 1 twelfth y uh, equals negative 4. And then to get y alone, you multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction in front of the variable. The reciprocal is 12 over y. And whatever you do to one side of an equation, you do the same thing to the other. So we multiply both sides by 12. Um, so the left side is y and the right side is negative 48. And again, if you check it here, left side equals right side once you simplify. So you know it's a good solution. Okay, let's move on. So here, um, so there's a little bit more work to do. I have 2 minus 3 times x plus 4 equals negative 2 times x minus 10. So just like the last example, I do have variables on both sides of the equation, um, but I need to simplify the left side and the right side before I bring my variables together. So that's what I did on this line. I first distributed the negative 3 here and the negative 2 here to give me the first line of my solution. Um, then I combined like terms in this line. Uh, so uh, 2 minus 12 
is negative 10. So I have negative 3x minus 10 on the left and negative 2x plus 20 on the right. Uh, then I decided to move my x's to the left side. So I do that by adding 2x to both sides. That's what I did here. Um, so negative 3x plus 2x gives me negative x minus 10. On the right side, the x is canceled uh, equals 20. Then you need to get x alone. You do that by adding 10 to both sides, which I did on the next line um, right here. And then you get negative x equals 30, but you want x, not negative x. So divide both sides by negative 1. You could also multiply by negative 1. It would give you the same result, and you get that x is negative 30. I didn't write out the work for checking it, but if you did, it would work. Um, so you should just practice checking um, often uh, because then you just get better with numbers and manipulating variables and things like that. All right, so this next example, again, has a little bit more complexity because I have parentheses inside of a bracket. So when that's the case, you always want to work from the inside out. So first you have to distribute the negative 2 um, here across 5 plus z. Simplify then what's inside the bracket before you distribute this 3 here. All right, so that's what I did on my first line. I distributed the negative 2 across the 5 plus z. So you get 3 times 1 minus 10 minus 2z equals, and on the right side, uh, I was able to combine 2z minus 11z, and that's negative 9z. All right, so here, 1 minus 10 is negative 9, so that's what you see in this line. That's the only thing that changed. So next I have to distribute 3 across negative 9 minus 2z, which I did in this line. So you get negative 27 minus 6z equals uh, negative 9z. Uh, so this time I'm going to move my z over to the right side. It really doesn't matter which side your variable is on when you're solving linear equations. So this time I'm going to add 6z to both sides so that they cancel on the left and on the right negative 9z plus 6z gives me negative 3z on the right and I still have negative 27 on the left. Then divide by negative 3. When you do these uh, negative 3s will cancel so you get that z is equal to 9 which again works if you were to plug it in. Okay so let's do another one that looks a little different. Uh, so this one is still a linear equation. All of my variables are in the numerator and they're raised to the first power, so it's still a linear equation. But I do have denominators um, that are numbers. So uh, although we can work with the fraction all throughout, I'm going to show you a, a different way to handle this, which will be really convenient later on when we have more complex fractions. And that technique is to multiply both sides the LCD. So what's the lowest common denominator of 10 and 15? So the lowest common denominator is 30. So this technique is to multiply both sides of the equation by 30, which is what you see here on this first line. Um, this technique will allow us to cancel all of the denominators. So I'll show you that here in line 2. So first I distributed the 30 across. So I get 30 times and then 2z minus 1 over 10, and 30 times um, 3z plus 4 over 15. And on the right side, same thing, 2z over 15 times 30. But notice that all of my denominators will cancel with something uh, with a factor in 30. So 10 goes into 30 three times. That's why you see this right here. The 10 cancels out. Um, and you're left with 30 in the numerator. So this becomes 3 times 2z minus 1. Then we did the same thing here. 15 goes into 30 twice. So the 15 cancels, and you're left with 2, which is what you see here, 2 times 3z plus 4. Um, and the same thing occurred here. 15 goes into 30 twice, so you're left with 2z times 2. Okay, so now we have to do all of that multiplication, so distribute on the left side. Uh, and when you do, you get 6z minus 3 
minus 6z minus 8 equals 4z. Um, so on the left side, the z's cancel. 6z minus 6z is 0. Um, and so you're left with negative 3 minus 8, which is negative 11, equal to 4z. Divide by 4, and you get that z is equal to negative 11 fourths. And again, if you were to plug this in, this would work. All right, so this is um, uh, similar steps, uh, except these are called literal equations. So uh, literal equations are equations with more than one variable. Uh, they will still be linear, meaning everything will be raised to the first power. And oftentimes, literary, literal equations will be formulas. So something that you may have seen before in a math class or in a chemistry class. Um, so here's our first example. We want to solve 2L plus 2W equal to P. So you might recognize this as the formula for a perimeter of a rectangle um, because 2 times the length plus 2 times the width gives you the perimeter of a rectangle. Um, but we want to solve this for, do, for W. So um, to solve this for W, you need to isolate the W on one side. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, subtract 2L from both sides of the equation. So when I do, the 2Ls cancel on the left. And on the right, um, you all you can do is write P minus 2L. These are not like terms, so you can't really put them together. They're just going to be written as P minus 2L. Uh, then you're left with 2W equals P minus 2L. Well, to solve for W, um, you divide both sides by 2. So the two will cancel on the left, and on the right, you're left with p minus um, 2l over 2. Now, you cannot, you cannot do this. I've had lots of students do this over the years. Cannot cancel these twos because they don't both have a 2 in it. So this is incorrect if you tried doing that. Um, so your solution could be written like this. As p minus 2l over 2, which is correct. Um, or if you divide each term by 2, like here, p over 2 gives you this, and uh, 2l over 2, well, then the 2s would cancel in that case. So that would get, just give you l. So either solution is correct. Just two different ways of expressing it. OK, let's do another literal equation. Um, so this one is to solve L W H, which means length times width times height equals volume. So that's actually equals V, which is volume. So that's actually the formula for the volume of a um, rectangular prism or like a box. Uh, so the length times the width times the height gives you the volume. All right, so we're being asked to solve it for H. So remember, to isolate h, all we have to do is do the opposite operation uh, of the other variables. So since we're multiplying length, width, and height, we're going to divide both sides by length and width. Therefore, length and width cancel on the left, and you're left with that your height is volume uh, divided by length times width. And that's the only way um, or the most convenient way to express it. All right, here's another one. We want to solve 1 half, and then parentheses, so this will be times, a plus b minus c equal to d. And we need to solve this for c. All right, so um, first thing I want to do is get rid of that 1 half. Um, so that way, I'm not dealing with fractions at all. So in order to do that, you multiply both sides by 2, like I did here. When I multiply both sides by 2 on the left side, the 2 times a half will cancel. So you're left with a plus b minus c equals 2 times d. All right, then remember, you need to solve for c. Uh, so I need to move the a and the b over to the other side. Well, these are being added on this side. So that means I should subtract them over to the right side. So I'm left with two, negative c equals 2d minus a minus b. OK, but I want c, not negative c. So if you multiply both sides by negative 1, negative c times negative 1, well, that gives you c. And then all the other terms on the right side change signs. So I'll get negative 2d plus a plus b. And there you go. Um, by the way, it doesn't matter what the order is on the right side. 
um, if you wrote it, let's say like this, b plus a minus 2d, that means the same thing, okay? As long as the signs in front of them correspond, um, these could be in any order. All right, let's do another example. This time we have to solve for p. Uh, so p uh, plus p times r times t equals m. All right, this is actually a formula for uh, the maturity of a loan, where P is the principal, and uh, this is the interest earned on the loan. So the maturity is what you owe back to the bank, is how much you borrowed, plus how much interest you accrued. So that's your maturity. Um, so you don't have to memorize what these formulas mean. You just have to know how to solve them. I'm just kind of sharing that with you. Okay, so here... Um, in order to solve for P, notice that I have P in two places. So first thing I want to just have one P. So in order for me to just have one P, I'm actually going to factor it out of these two expressions. It's a common factor. So if I factor it out, I can put P in front of this parentheses, um, and that leaves me with one plus RT on the inside. So remember, if you were to distribute this across, it should equal the line above and it does so um, so and the right side stays the same as just M so now in order to get P alone I have to divide both sides by 1 plus RT which is what I did on this line so uh, on the left side you're left with just P and on the right side you're left with M over 1 plus RT all right so here's another um, so we have 3x plus 2y equals negative 9, and we want to solve for x. Uh, so you might recognize this as a linear equation, uh, the equation of a line. Uh, so we want to uh, solve it just for x. So first thing you want to do is move the 2y over to the other side, or the right side. So that means you subtract it. So that's what you get right here. Um, so 3x equals negative 2y minus 9. Um, and then you need to divide both sides by 3 to get x alone. So you're left with negative 2y minus 9 over 3. You could leave it like that. Um, I decided to divide each one by 3 so, so that I have separate terms. So I have negative 2 thirds y minus 3 because 9, negative 9 divided by 3 gives you the negative 3. Okay, so that's that uh, example. So let's move on. Um, we want to solve P equal to R minus C over N for C. All right, so the first thing uh, you need to do is tr uh, get rid of this denominator because right now the C is, is over N. So um, multiply both sides by N will take care of that, which is what you see right here, uh, because then the N's will cancel. So I'm left with NP equals R minus C. Uh, then subtract R from both sides, again, because you want C alone. So you have NP minus R equals negative C. But just like a couple other examples, we don't want negative C, we want positive C. So multiply both sides by negative 1. So the signs on the left change to negative NP plus R uh, equal to C, that you can express your answer like that, or you can rearrange it so that the first term is positive as C equal to R minus NP. Uh, so that's it for this lesson. So uh, caution when you're doing homework on this lesson, um, the uh, computer expects, uh, is very specific as to what it expects. So if your equation has capital and lowercase letters like this last example did, make sure that you're inputting the appropriate case as well. So uh, for example, if you were to try to enter this uh, into your homework system and you use lowercase r instead of capital R, it would say you're wrong. So uh, be, be really careful with that. All right, so uh, give the homework a try. Good luck.